start off by, I'm, I'm just going to kick start with a couple of questions that's there on top of my mind. Um, so to begin with, I think a lot of discussions, and we've had this discussion since morning, um, there's almost, it seems that there's a lot of clarity on what we need, what we want to do, what we need to do, but somehow things don't happen uh, as they want it to be. What do you think is, is the issue around why the execution uh, fails? Uh, even when we want uh, Sanan, we are somewhere in between Singur and Sanan. So partly we have not been able to assure our politicians that if follow the policy of development and growth, they will be able to come back to power. I met someone in government talking about Chinese trade deficit. And I gave a solution that Tata Motors is an Indian company. They go and sell JLR in China. China is world's largest automobile market. Why can't they give preferential treatment to Tata Motors and buy JLR and reduce the trade deficit? Dangal makes five times more money in China than in India. But China allows only two or three Indian films to come in a year. Why not they allow 300 Indian films to come? Who knows, some other film will become like Dangal. Now, these are all the things which is appreciated by other democracies. So when American president comes to sell Boeing to us, we all clap saying that, wow, what a president. He's working for his country. But when our president goes abroad for selling India, will say, ye to suit boot ki sarkar hai. Now, unless until we convince our politicians that you will come back to power if you follow development policies, growth policies, and support businessmen, and we won't doubt your integrity, how will politicians get convinced? True, so it's as much about, uh, uh, you know, an insurance for them as it is for what we are, they want that certainty as much as we do. Uh, you talked uh, um, about the need to spend more, the, the, the cut and paste you said from the American and the EU model. Uh, and one of the things is the whole thing about fiscal. Um, obviously, one of the most topical things of late is uh, Dr. Arvind Subramaniam's paper, which has been doing so much around. And he thinks that there is no space for us to uh, go beyond on fiscal because he also refers to what's outside the government balance sheet. What are your thoughts on? Obviously, there's a need for a kickstart of an action, and 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 even if it, even if it's temporary, but there's a big view. Uh, there's a concern on the on whether we'll bust it dramatically. So. I'll give you an incidence. This happened actually twice. One with the CEO of an American bank and once with the ambassadors of certain foreign countries. This was in one of the express adda where all those gentlemen were giving their view on India. And I had the chance of asking one question in Turf Club in Mumbai. And one was a private conversation with the American bank CEO. And my only question was that, look, when Indian crisis came in 1991 or Asian crisis came in 1997, the prescription given by IMF to India as well as Asian countries was cut your fiscal deficit, become fiscally prudent, raise your interest rates, liberalize your country and get as much foreign capital as possible. You open your country from license permit Raj and create competition, make your industry more competitive. Essentially, all these things in the short term created pain for us. Because when we cut fiscal deficit, it creates misery of people. When we opened license permit Raj and opened our country, many industry died. When we raised interest rates to lower inflation, it created pressure on corporates. It was a painful journey, but because we went through that pain, there was gain eventually. Now when 2008 crisis came, what did you do? You didn't follow IMF prescription. 
your fiscal deficit went up, your interest rates came down, you pumped liquidity, you bailed out companies by capitalizing them from General Motors to Citibank to JP Morgan. Essentially, you exactly did opposite of what you had prescribed. Now, because we took the pain, we gained. You are not taking pain, so are you going to gain? That was the end of conversation. Both the times my question ensured that the conference was over. over. <laughs> now, let's look at fiscal deficit. There are three entities, Freddie Mae, Fannie Mae, Ginnie Mae. Below them it is written, backed by the full faith and credit of government of United States of America. Are their borrowing considered into fiscal deficit in US? I have no idea. Professor Subramaniam will have a better idea. But my gut is that even those guys don't necessarily include everything in their budget. Now, there are lots of papers which say US is going into unfunded pension liability crisis, unfunded medical liability crisis. The Obama Medicare was all about doing, settling that. Is that part of US budget? No. Then why are we being taught that was you have to be holier than cow? I think as a country, we must do what is right for us. We must copy what West is doing rather than what West is preaching. Because they don't practice what they preach. In 2008, they didn't do what we did in 1991. True, I know. The, uh, there is this economist from Oxford, uh, uh, Mark Blythe. He's written an entire book. And the book is called Austerity, uh, the, the Emergence of a Dangerous Idea. Yeah. So he thinks that, so he clearly believes that if the more you austere you are, it's not good for the whole thing. You touched a lot about uh, some of the behavioral changes and uh, you talked of uh, how, about the, about the whole compliance culture. Uh, and I just wanted your reaction on something which has been fascinating me for a while, which is that we've seen the GST collection on average now stable at about 1 lakh crore a yeah. month. This is despite uh, autos, which have taken a big dip, and autos are 28% of the basket. So uh, do you think this, the fact that we're maintaining that is better compliance, or, 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 or is it back to your other point saying that what we are looking for is different from what is growing? So again, I'll draw myself to a private conversation with a group of chartered accountants. And I checked with them about a year back that we believe gross GST collection is 5 lakh crore, input credit is 4 lakh crore, and net number is coming around 1 lakh crore, sometimes up, sometimes less. In your opinion, what will be the leakage in this 4 lakh crore input credit? The group's divergence was from 30,000 crore to 1 lakh crore. Okay. Even if you take average, it might be 50,000 crore. Mm. So yes, culture of compliance is improving, but it is not fully compliant yet. Now from 1st April, we are launching in B2B segment invoice matching. matching. I think that will improve compliance ente further. Over a period of time, as the second generation of businessmen comes into play, my feeling is that GST compliance will improve. But the burden of improving GST compliance also lies on government. They can't run away from their liability. They must follow age-old wisdom of Chanakya, which he wrote in Arthasastra. The collection of tax should be like how we collect honey from the flower. There is no sting, and yet essence is taken. The GST has to become simpler, it has to become smoother, and then the compliance will improve. So it's carrot and stick together, together not just stick. Just the stick alone. Absolutely true. You know, you talked about uh, you, uh, a whole variety of issues, and one of the interesting things you ended was with the markets and thing. How important is nominal growth for India right now? And obviously the underlying question is how important is inflation? And therefore your, your views on inflation targeting, uh, is this a time to sort of give that a go by, get some inflation, uh, which will help? I'm just taking your thoughts on that. So earlier, 
in my active career, I have seen governors, Dr. Rangrajan, Dr. Bimal Jalan, Dr. Vaibhi Reddy, Dr. Subba Rao, Dr. Raghuram Rajan, Dr. Urjit Patel, and Sakti Kanta Das. The first four governors, Rangrajan, Bimal Jalan, Vaibhi Reddy, Dr. Subba Rao, they were all-rounders. Again, if I take the terminology of Mahabharat, Indian chariot has one wheel of auto and other wheel of tractor. <laughs> and the horses are not stung on one side, they are stung on all the four sides. And like Krishna drew chariot of Arjuna, the RBI governor was driving chariot of India. One day he'll focus on rupee which is falling by raising interest rates which will impact growth adversely. Nicely, he'll move to protect growth by cutting interest rate, but that will push up inflation. Immediately, he will manage interest rates to keep inflation under control. At all point of time, he was managing four directions of interest rate, rupee, growth, inflation, government's borrowing program, and financial sector stability. This task was done with such Ellen that Joseph Stiglitz, Nobel laureate, mentioned that if Dr. Vaivi Reddy was US Fed chairman, US would not have seen subprime crisis. Wow. There could not have been a better compliment for Indian Reserve Bank and Indian RBI governor than this. Now, because there was someone else watching Mahabharat, right. he thought that it was Arjun who won Mahabharat. It was he who demolished Bhishma. It was he who killed Karna. So they said Arjun was the reason for victory in Mahabharat. Now let's convert RBI to Arjun. So we gave him single target of inflation. Forget growth, forget rupee, forget financial sector stability, forget everything else, just focus on inflation. World over, central banks focus on core inflation we gave the target of nominal inflation, headline inflation. Mm. World over central bankers admit that by raising interest rates, you can't influence food prices, you can't influence fuel prices. Implicitly, our policy making believes that by raising interest rates in India, onion prices will come down mm. and Saudi oil prices will come down. <laughs> we can't be further from truth than this. We converted Krishna to Arjun hoping to win Mahabharat. Anyone who has read Mahabharat knew that it was Krishna who helped Arjun to win Mahabharat, not Arjun alone who could have won Mahabharat. If there was no Krishna, Arjun would have died at Absolutely. the end of Jaitrath only. Right. So, because we want to trust foreigner more than local, this problem occurs. So, how important would, uh, would that be? So, would so you think inflation that? targeting is important when inflation is high. high. But inflation is like cholesterol or blood pressure. I think blood pressure will be more appropriate. Pardon my medical knowledge. If you have low BP, then also you are in trouble. If you have high BP, then also you are in <laughs> trouble. Your BP should be moderate. Same way inflation should be moderate. It can't be too low, it can't be too high. And RBI will have to manage inflation in emerging market along with other objectives. If my Google knowledge is giving me right answer, inflation targeting was introduced by Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Their governor's bonus was linked with the inflation target. If he achieved inflation, he got bonus, otherwise he didn't <laughs> get the bonus. Few years back, Reserve Bank of New Zealand abandoned inflation targeting, saying that it doesn't serve any purpose. They converted their all-rounder to specialized batsmen who will do betting, bowling, fielding, wicket keeping. We converted our specialized wicket keeper, batsman, baller and fielder to just be all rounder. <laughs> we need four players. We can't run with one player. It's as simple as that. Um, and I, I'll ask you a question which I also asked Dr. Virmani and maybe the answer is uh, self-evident but still it's important to get your perspective. This whole thing about the bad bank and uh, think um, What's your, how do you take the debate, uh, how do you think about the conflict of the need for a bad bank and the moral hazard 
question. Uh, this has also come up every time there's been a, a voluntary disclosure in tax, saying if there's an amnesty scheme and there's been a moral hazard question around that as well, uh, but it's been successful in the past. But how, we, how do you think about it? You know, there's a thing that there's an incentive for people to sort of sink, kitchen sink their problems away. So there is always idealistic way of doing things. And then there is practical way of doing things. If you are too idealistic, it may not bring you success. But a practical person will always find out a way to come out of trouble and be successful. So we have to evaluate this from practical point of view, not from idealistic point of view. If we had pumped in, let's say, few thousand crores in ILFS and kept it a running organization, maybe the realizable value of ILF assets would have been higher because everyone knew that they are not desperate seller. But by not giving that capital under this moral hazard, we let the whole world knew that ILF is a desperate seller and we probably ended up realizing lower than fair value than what we should have got. Today, when we say bad bank, it does not mean that you don't punish the guilty. All we are saying is that you don't punish the depositor. For example, there is a cooperative bank called PMC Bank in Mumbai right. where people have suffered because of the misgovernance in the bank. Now, the amount was just 6,500 crore. It came at a time when NBFC defaults have already roped the bot and it could have easily become a Absolutely. contagion. Now, as of today, we have put restrictions and we have allowed some ex withdrawals and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> PMC depositors continue to protest on street of Mumbai. Now, could we not have put some money in PMC to ensure that 90% of depositors are taken out so that their protest comes to an end and then go after the people who have siphoned of money from the bank, seize their assets, liquidate right. it and pay it back. My guess is that if we can sharpen the process of judiciary, hmm. then problems like PMC can be solved much, much faster without creating damage. Sure. Look at what was done with one particular bank. This was way back, 10 years back. There was a rumor when the, the ATM went dry. Hmm. Yep. And it just started circulating all over the country, especially in Western and Southern India. Even before WhatsApp? even before WhatsApp. Now one, the bank could have simply said that we are shut for business, figure out what you want to do. That would have created a riot on the street and contagion on the bank. The RBI came to support the bank saying that you open all the branches, we'll continue to fund you. Don't let any customer go back. Employees work 24 by 7, they work during the night time, RBI kept on replenishing ATMs and the bank branches. They didn't have money with I RBI, yet RBI gave them money. All the depositors were paid back. For 24 hours, the madness continued. After 24 hours, same depositors came back to deposit the cash. Right. You straightway quell that entire thing by doing practical approach rather than idealistic approach. Be practical. This is not the time to be idealistic. idealistic. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, uh, Reasonomics is, uh, is, is the pre-budget debate and uh, so it's all, it, it, it would be absolutely wrong on my part not to ask you the question, what do you expect from the budget? So, my request will be, let the budget be realistic. We have to give true picture of economy and government's finance to the citizens. Second, the budget should facilitate entrepreneurship. Today, entrepreneurship is on the back foot. We need to ensure that they are halfway down the pitch. Right. Third, there are lots of complications in tax process. Concepts like bonus stripping, dividend stripping, conversing interest income to capital gains through zero coupon debentures. Mm. There are so many such things which allow people to escape tax net 
we must simplify things in a manner where there is no incentive for people to do such things. Right. History has taught us that lower tax rates increase compliance. tax collection and improve compliance. We should do that across the board. And finally, let's not hype budget too much. It is nothing but statement of account of government. Outside of budget, a lot of things can be done and a lot of things needs to be done. It's like, you know, the power overs hmm. are 45 to 50, but we need to accelerate on 38 over because our asking run rate is 12 and we are scoring <laughs> four and a half. We don't have the luxury to wait till budget. Start hitting today itself. Great. I have so many more questions, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot from the audience as, as well. So um, I'm just going to throw the floor open. Uh, people with questions, they can put up their hand and mice can be reached. That'd be great. Hello, Nilesh. Hi. Thank you very much. It was extraordinarily lucid in my opinion. Right. We have been, I'm hearing you for a long, for more than two decades and meeting off and on. But I think the point which you raised on PMC Bank and ILFS, which are still fresh in the memory, right? What you suggested must have occurred to many great minds here as well as elsewhere. 6,500 crores of PMC Bank. I mean, leave the ILFS 90,000 plus crore. But these are very easy, relatively easy thing for the government to remove the negative sentiment. So what is lacking? Is it the government will? Or is it the judiciary? Or is it something which I'm not aware of? Based upon. See, because these are the <coughs> ones which created a significant damage and spiral effect on the economy. ILFS could have been easily, what you said, pump in. And it is a common sense which probably would have occurred to many of us. But something which is not done, and despite changing the board and doing something, we don't see, at least it's not very visible what actions have been taken, how much is liquidated, because it has significantly impacted NBFC industry and the sentiments across. So in your opinion, what, what is Still lacking in this country <laughs> to do that? There are great minds around. In fact, there are people like you around so many places. They can suggest and government should act very fast on this. Mr. Thank Tendulkar, you. we are 80s Indian cricket team. Sunil Gavaskar was great batsman. So was Mohinder Amarnath. So was Dilip Bengsarkar. We had some great ballers. Bisan Bedi, Erapalli, Prasanna, Bhagwat Chandrasekhar. But collectively, they didn't deliver as much as their potential should have delivered. Somewhere, it might be a bit harsh to say, but we didn't click as a team. Today, in 2019, Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, Cheteshwar Pujara, Jasprit Bumra, Mohammed Shami, they are as good as, or as bad as Gavaskar Mohinder, and so on and so forth. But they are working as a team. Our biggest problem is that Individually, Indians are brilliant. Moment you put them collectively, our crab mentality comes out. When I was a kid, this joke was told to me, and it is still valid. One Indian exporter was sending Indian crabs abroad without putting any lid on the container. And someone asked, Bhai, kya kar rahe ho tum? He said, no, doesn't matter. That crab mentality is restricting us. We are not working as a team. We are working individually. Individually, we try to take a decision, but collectively, that's not adding value. Other questions? There's a, can a mic? See, uh, the large caps moved from 84% to 94%. Uh, this was the news yesterday also in Economic Times, and you mentioned in your uh, presentation also. What is the reason for that? One is you said that it is trading at a very high PE ratio which uh, it's costly stocks to buy. What are the other reasons to this situation uh, today which is almost 94%? So whenever there is trouble, people by definition deviate towards safety. In the current growth recession, the large cap companies have limited restrictions on raising credit. 
most of them were debt free but even if they wanted to borrow they can raise money at a much cheaper rate so their business is less impacted compared to small and mid cap and which is where their profitability continues and then they started getting valuation of an oasis in the desert every else is so arid that whatever is left in oasis you want to give maximum price everyone wants to be in oasis no one wants to be in desert now if you can bring canal and water into desert the desert will become green and oasis value will come down so if the government regulator judiciary and us put together we bet like virat kohli six months things will turn around if we don't bet like virat kohli 18 months things will turn around but things will turn around for sure yeah there's a question mike here oh, you can just use my mic maybe so my question is regarding the fiscal stimulus which the government uh, uh, extended in the last 3 months in august which is basically tax cuts which is very much appreciated by the corporates etc but the other physical thing that the government can take is government expenditure now between the two of them right we all understand that the tax cut takes a lot more time for the economy to actually kick start as other than expenditure what in according to your opinion would have been a better option to spend more government expenditure thereby creating a demand as against a tax cut in the current scenario so tax cut is like ayurvedic medicine it will work over a period of time but no instant relief a demand side stimulus including government expenditure is like allopathic medicine it will have side effect but gratification will be instant now we need both i need to relieve my pain by taking you know medicine modern medicine quickly at the same time i have to go towards ayurveda and yoga to improve my immunity what is important is equilibrium corporate tax rate cut is fantastic step it removes one constraint in our entrepreneurs burden our cost of land acquisition is high the process of land acquisition is long our labor cost is low productivity is low hence labor cost actually becomes high and along with inflexibility to move labor out of business or in business makes it more cumbersome the cost of capital is very high real interest rates are highest in the world equity is virtually not available or if it's available people want 15 20% return so with high labor cost high land cost high cost of capital you want to also levy highest taxation how will entrepreneur work we have removed one constraint of tax now we must focus on removing constraints of land labor and capital if we can bring all these factors together then 5 trillion dollar is a cake walk hi question. one question from my side so while you give a lot of good examples about uh, uh, you know the indian economy and the good things which the government is doing and the pit stop was a fantastic example uh, in the recent past like you know, the government and the politicians have been talking about waivers and a lot of waivers which have been given so how do you see that impacting or helping the india growth and what is your view on that so one is to give a person fish but the better way is to teach them how to fish that will solve his problem permanently now yesterday i was sitting with someone who has done a lot of work on water now we migrated to rice which is a very very water guzzling stock are i mean i don't know much about kannadiga food but i presume it will be true yes. we our food was mainly millet Millets. 
the gujjus were eating jawar and bajri wheat was a luxury we migrated from what is now known as superfoods in western world and which was a common man's food in india to what we can't afford in his view and i am not expert on agriculture but in his view the incidence of higher cancer kind of cases are because of higher usage of pesticides second india has become diabetes capital of the world primarily because of higher usage of rice kind of food which is full of carbohydrates carbohydrates rather than millets which our body can consume third we have one of the highest average rainfall in the world but because we are using this water guzzling crop we are wasting our water fourth in millet there is no residue which you have to burn so there is less pollution but by burning our residual of rice and paddy and wheat we have lowered lifespan of average north indian now we have to handle this he also now i am sharing all this based on someone else's research but i believe he was telling the truth you want to double farmer income what's the best way to do it they have done desilting of water bodies in about 10000 locations in maharashtra our water storage capacity is overstated because we don't do desilting when you do desilting you remove the sediments which have come accumulated over the years you create 4 cm thick slab of desilting on the farm the carbon content of that area goes up substantially your productivity of food grain goes up 50% in first year and it keeps on increasing for rest of the period your fertilizer consumption and pesticide consumption comes down because the soil itself is nutrient by lowering your fertilizer and pesticide input cost by improving your productivity the desilting example gives them confidence that farmers income will double in somewhere around 12 to 18 months more importantly your water usage will come down because your soil is more nutrient more importantly wherever you have spread desilted materials the absorption capacity of soil increases it absorbs moisture as well as rain water and recharges ground water farms where you have done desilting where you have spread desilting material next to them also see improvement in productivity because of recharging of water level now this is how we have to focus on agriculture to increase the productivity we are not able to do this at the scale at which we should do the bigger dams are needed in few location but this recharging of water bodies through such things is far more beneficial to the economy and to the agriculture so we need to rethink our agriculture policy it's not productive my colleagues went to israel and it's a desert the quality of food they produce and the quantity of food they produce is unbelievable in terms of productivity what israel has done in the desert can we do it in the fertile lands of india our forefathers were doing organic and natural farming somewhere we have blindly copied western model of using fertilizer pesticides creating those crops which are water guzzling creating crops which are not suitable for human consumption we need to rethink agriculture and there are some really really smart people one last thing i'm forgetting which region he talked about but i'm sure there will be similar regions in south india also 
where the traditional method of water collection was already there through water tanks. But because they all have been clogged, it's not working. You clean those, you know, canals or uh, collection, water body collections, that material is as good as silted material, and the entire water body gets recharged. And this were built thousands of years ago. Can we go back to what we were doing thousands of years back in agriculture? Um, so, we can ask. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, there you so, are. in your presentation, you give examples of large stocks like uh, Hindustan Unilever, which are operating at peaks of 70. I suppose you even have Colgate Palmolive FMCG, which is also operating at the same levels. In your example, you mentioned about ITC, which is operating at probably 24 P. I think it's at one of its lowest prices right now, the 52 yes. week low. What in your view are the reasons for an ITC suffering so much? I won't say suffering, but of course the price being so low compared to a Hindustan Unilever or a Colgate Palmolive. And where do you expect these prices to go? So I really don't know where the prices will go. But one of the reasons why ITC has been derated is because globally ESG norms have become quite prevalent. People want to make money through better social, better environmental and better governance companies. Now in ITC and Lever, governance is not an issue. Their social commitment is not an issue. But certainly a tobacco becomes no-no for most ESG investors. So there has been consistent selling in ITC by ESG conscious investors. And hence, the prices have been lower. The valuations are lower than historical average. But as someone like Lever continues to get the premium valuation because they are not in tobacco business. Uh, I, I was attending a conference for a company where all the fund managers were sitting and the CEO of the company was making a presentation. 99.99% turnover and 110% of profit comes from socially conscious business. But they are also bidding and building capacity for certain military contracts. Three investors moved out of that meeting, shutting their laptop, moment the word military contract came. It didn't matter that company didn't have any order on hand. They were only loss making in that division, but it's a clear no-no. So there is environmentally, socially, and governance oriented investments, which is taking a lot of momentum. Those guys don't invest in tobacco companies. Can we have, I think we'll have time for one last question. Let me, I know, I, I'm, just, I'm just seeing if there's anybody else, otherwise, who's not asked before, then Lakshman, I'll just come back to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you're closer to the mic, so thank you. And there's, maybe we'll take one more after that, sure. since you. Uh, sir, you mentioned about you know, 35 billion uh, PVC deals happening in the last few quarters. Uh, mostly this investment is in the privately uh, validated uh, like thesis, right? Do you think you know, government is doing enough uh, 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 creating a platform for this you know, privately validated thesis in terms of valuations and etc. Uh, creating a platform to get it publicly validated for these new age companies and... The government has no role to play in this segment. In fact, I mean, Len will be a better person to comment, but IT industry grew because government didn't intervene. Didn't, that's true. If government had tried to give support to IT industry, probably we would not have achieved the heights which we have achieved. See, it's not government's job to run business or to indulge into business. Let the market take care. The government is a referee. It's not a player. They should do the job of referee. Yes, you are Indian referee officiating in Indian match, but please don't come to bet because our batsmen are not scoring runs. That's not your job. Your job is empiring. Give right decisions. Let the boys fail once, they relearn. 
in this private equity space, in this venture capital space, as long as we ensure that market functions, that should be good enough. Let there be transparency. Let there be settlement on proper manner. Let the contracts be enforced. Today, one big problem which we face as investor, there are many deals which are structured as equity contribution, but below that, there is guaranteed return. It's a debt structured as equity. A poor investor like me ends up treating debt as equity and goes wrong. Now, this is what transparency is not there. Sunshine is the best disinfectant in the world. That's what Dr. Devi Shetty always said in Narayana Rudala's presentation. All his hospitals allow sunshine to come freely, whereas many hospitals don't allow sunshine right. to enter and spend on costly disinfectants. Bring transparency, let market function, things will settle down. Uh, there was one last question, yeah, and then, I'm, then we'll... Nilesh Bhai, I'm a chartered accountant too. It's always wonderful to hear you articulate such complex thing in a practical thing. Uh, you mentioned that one of the self-goals we do as Indians as a whole is the investment and chasing gold. Now, is, is, there, is there enough reason for the government to kind of disincentivize investment in gold and probably do something more to get household savings or middle, middle class savings more into equity or something more productive? So, why did gold get so much prominence? There are multiple reasons. One was that in the olden times, the king could confiscate your property. There was no rule of law. So people started investing in gold because that was not confiscatable by the government or the, by the king. Second, gold became sthridhan. The wealth always went to male member of the family. In some way, the father was giving gold jewelry to daughter, and that was her sthridhan, that was her share in the wealth of the family. Somewhere, the poor people, poor segment of society who stay in kacha houses, they can't keep their wealth in the house, and they had no access to bank account. They had to carry the wealth with them, so they will always wear a bangle or a jewelry. That was their entire wealth. It was transportable. There are thousands of other reasons. I might be sounding quite stupid, but in all Hindi films, a wedding is never completed without heavily studded bride. That also created psychological pressure on every father to you know, give heavy studded jewelry to his daughter. Lots of things came together why we became obsessed with gold. Our religious endowment also started investing in gold for the idol. This is the reason why gold came in. But this has created such a big damage to our economy over the years. Now, how do we change it? One way to change this is creating Jandan account kind of thing where people start putting their wealth in bank rather than keeping in gold. Second, I have to make sure that financial products are available so easily that it's almost as easy as buying gold. You do KYC in mutual fund insurance companies, DMAT account versus buying gold. Gold is 10 times easier. Third, it requires education. If you buy a 2 gram, 5 gram, 10 gram gold coin in a bank or a jeweler shop, you lose 25, 30%. But that loss is not hitting consumer. Make it aware through educational process that was when you're buying small denomination gold coin, you are buying much, much lower thing. Then you create nudge. Today, we charge 12.5% import duty on gold. So 100 rupee of gold appears to you as 112.50. When you walk out with a gold in your pocket, 
you don't realize that what you have paid 112.50 is actually valued at 100 in Dubai market. Can we convert this import duty to GST? Government is indifferent because 12.5% import duty, 12.5% GST, same revenue. In fact, it is beneficial to government because that $7 billion of gold smuggling which occurs annually, there's no incentive anymore for gold smuggler. He'll buy gold at 100 and bring it 100 in India. He's not in charity business. So that $7 billion you want, 12.5%, that's about 6,000 crore additional revenue. The jeweler can't complain because he was earlier paying 12.5% import duty, now he's paying 12.5% GST. The consumer can't complain because he was paying import duty, he better pay GST. But by nudging consumer to instantly realize 12.5% loss, he pays 112.50 on counter and he gets out with 100 rupee of gold, the behavior will change. Then we have to go to Bappi Lari and request him, Ki, sir, <laughs> you are the person who created gold demand in India. Now please work for reducing gold demand in India. We have to request all serial maker or television producers, all filmmakers that please show a bride who says that I'm not going to wear gold and change the social behavior. We have to go to temples and say that, look, if you are keeping money in gold, why not put that into school, colleges, hospitals? The God will be more happy. We need to build that kind of messaging by religious gurus. I doubt if any guru will say no to this. In Karnataka, again, I'm going for what I read in newspapers. There are so many muds which run school, colleges, yes. hospitals, sure. and uh, say, Sadavrat, where you yeah. provide food. So it's already happening over here. We just have to replicate on a larger scale. If we do all these things, then over 100 years, I'm sure gold demand will come down. <laughs> Okay. On that note, um, I think uh, we have to end this session. I'm sure if I'd left it, it would have gone on forever. But uh, Nilesh, uh, uh, as always, absolutely amazed by the clarity and simplicity, you know, from Abhimanyu to Abraham Lincoln, from demonetization to Deepika Padukone. Your just ability to bring, put all of them in a perspective is absolutely outstanding. And the message of, uh, like I said, Great optimism, but you still ended with a hundred year stuff. And so, so that realism also comes in. Thank you so much. And it's a great way to understand. Proceed. Thank you.